the ghost of internet reviews! You've neglected your duties as an internet reviewer and ignored the holiday spirit! Oh my god! What's gonna happen to Ace? Hey! Wake up! Oh, well, hey, Phelous. Uh, hi, uh, I didn't expect you. Uh, is it title card time again already? No, I'm supposed to be the ghost of Christmas reviews. You haven't made an animated anarchy sense. Well, ever! What the hell were you doing all this time? Well, you, you know, I, I've been kind of busy, you know? Well, anyway, it's time someone gave you a little Christmas spirit and you got back to your review series, like you promised! Huh? But that was it! And, uh, oh. Well, you know, I guess I should do something for this occasion. I mean, tis the season. <laughs> so, what am I here? <laughs> Merry Christmas, Scrooge McDickpick! Whoosh! And it's Christmas time! Should come as no surprise to anyone that this is one of my favorite times of the year. And you know why? The tradition of the Christmas special. Throughout entertainment history, there have been many cartoons made especially for this time of the season to brighten up our spirits and keep as a memorable tradition. It all comes down to the heart of it all. What makes Christmas so special? Why do we celebrate it so? The time of hope, giving, and good feelings triumphing over cynicism and greed. But like every subject, there's also those that just tend to staple on the Christmas name for the sake of it, and are only memorable for how terrible and tacked on they are. They all say they're Christmas specials, but they follow the same premise and miss the point completely. Usually with, what's wrong with Santa this time, and what famous cartoon will save him. And with that said, it pains me to bring up that my once cherished cartoon cat also fell victim to this tired concept. This is Felix the Cat Saves Christmas, and I hope this shows you why I took that extended break. As we start the opening credits, uh, let me see if I can play a little trick on your ears for a second. Okay, okay, wait, wait. I already found our first flaw. Yep, that's the same guy who made the last Felix movie. And I'm just waiting for some mushy-faced sewer aliens that can take off their heads to suddenly pop up out of nowhere. But you know, that might be a little too on the nose. We start off our story at uh, Poindexter's house, obviously. Settling back with a good book. How riveting. Oh, very interesting. There is a definite correlation between the construction of a gingerbread man and an atomic reaction. Interesting reaction. But what does it mean? Ah, here it is. Yeesh, man, I'm very certain the doorbell ring was enough to get your attention. Why the alarm? Hmm, yeah, I see, I see. Oh dear, not good. Hmm, yes, yes, ah, oh, so interesting. I have to stick 
to lighter reading. Mm, yeah, 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 the door man, answer the door. I wonder who that could be. Hi, Boinsy, Mary. Yeah. Huh, there's something about that voice. Boy, that was a chilling experience. Something about it, I just can't put my finger on it. Gee, Boinsy, nice tree. I don't know, it just sounds so full of house. That performance you're hearing that just screams, I'm trying to do a Mickey Mouse impression, but I'm terrible at it, is none other than Dave Coulier. You know, I thought I was going to become a catsicle standing out there. I don't know how, I don't know why, it's just... That's Dave Coulier doing the voice of Felix the Cat. It speaks for itself. Just what I always wanted. He doesn't even sound like he's trying. Why even invite him to the sound booth? He could have done it over the phone. It wouldn't have sounded any different. Emote. I'm glad you like it. They exchange some gifts of pure thoughtlessness until, well, let me just ask. What does this sound like to you? You'll never hit me with that snowball as long as I stay here. Well, not only do these characters sound like annoying chipmunks, but they seem to talk in this inflection that's like out of a Nick Jr. preschool show. They might as well have gotten John Malkovich. Hey kids, I'm gonna sit on this couch. I'm sitting on the couch, and I'm going to review a movie of a failed Christmas special. Can you say fail? Very good! I'm not even trying to bag on preschool shows, it's just what kid could sit down long enough to pay attention to this? Dora the Explorer is more fast paced. Here's the real present. Oh my, red glasses. They're fat with a P. What? I hope I don't make a spectacle out of myself. Funny, Ponzi, but leave the jokes to me. Because as we know, when you think comedy, you think Dave Coulier. Anyway, we cut to I Made a Boo Boo himself, the professor, whose name is, I guess, still never established along with another Lost in Time cartoon henchman, or hench dog, Rock Bottom, who I swear was not as incompetent in the original TV series. Then again, I'm just glad they didn't bring back Vavoom. To quote Scrooge, one of my favorite heroes of all time, Bah Humbug! Well, if you haven't guessed by now, the professor, angry at Christmas, devises a plan to ruin it for others by making it snow non-stop. But not before it... The, the, the hell is that? Th those little yellow platform... Okay, writers, artists, was there no other way to get him down from there? It's not easy being mean, a special gift for being clever. This is the bane of all villains today, the I'm so evil song. That one song that comes up every once in a while that forces the villain to tell the audience, I'm the bad guy, and I do bad things. Just watch. He's as slimy as a snake. I enjoy being evil. Let me tell you about all the evil things that I do and how I'm evil because, you know, that makes for a great villain personality. Acknowledging his cruelty instead of, I don't know, letting the audience decide for themselves. But what do you expect from a cartoon that just showed you Felix walk behind a couch and then say, You can't hit me while I'm behind this couch! Hehehehe. <laughs> hee hee <sighs> I digress. Anyway, the professor goes along with his plans and covers the earth with his snow machine, preventing anyone to enjoy the winter? This is a beautiful moment, Rock! I could just cavell! <laughs> and now it's time for Sad Panda's Christmas Facts! <laughs> Do you know what's in a Christmas light? Some people would lead you to believe that it's electricity. They are terribly, terribly wrong. It's actually a gathering of a million of tiny microscopic insects that try to do a mini version in, of Las Vegas in every light bulb. So every time you see just one light bulb going out, it basically means you're witnessing the end 
of a tiny civilization on a Christmas tree. Anyway, uh... This is Hal Broker. No, you're not. We interrupt this program for a special bulletin. The snow continues to fall with no end in sight. Let's cut to Steve Slalom, our man on the street. Steve? Steve? Hey, Steve! Hey, Steve! My mic is frozen to my lip! What are you gonna do? I don't know, the bill rang! Yeah. The big question is, will Santa be able to fly in these conditions? Good evening. Here is the news for parrots. We have to get to the North Pole to help Santa! <laughs> Wow, well, that didn't take long. <laughs> the ending sure was anticlimactic. Huh. Well, there you have it, folks. The Felix the Cat Christmas special. <laughs> I hope you detested it as much as I did, because I gotta go... I agree, Mr. Felix. And I have the perfect vehicle to take us there. What? This was a dream sequence? All that Santa and Felix stuff, presents, toy soldiers, dancers, and... Huh? Yeah? Yeah! Okay, moving along! But what does it mean? So our two heroes set off for the North Pole in t 1000s spacecraft. I don't have my seatbelt on! Meanwhile, back at the North Pole now, uh, the elves report to Santa the situation at hand. Hawaii is reporting 10 feet of snow. Avalanche in Argentina. New Jersey. Well, uh, oh, just another typical Jersey winter. Uh, is there something I'm not getting about Felix the Cat in New Jersey? Because I don't see the connection. Yuck, where are we? New Jersey? By our calculations, we are now under 999 billion mm, megatons. No, that voiceover isn't really working with that kind of animation. Uh, let's try this. <laughs> Don't will you just get that candy cane out of your mouth? Everything will work out, Papa. It always does. I hope you're right, Mama. I hope you're right. Come on, Santa. This is like, what, the 156th time that you've needed help for Christmas? That's, seriously, you should be prepared for crap like this by now. Where's the heat in this thing? You're not getting cold feet on me, are you, Mr. Felix? Uh, crazy. <laughs> like I said before, leave the jokes to me. Yeah, and uh, I'm still waiting for him. Wow! Look out! The hell was that? I thought this was Snowpocalypse, not fire and dice apocalypse. Listen, if they're not gonna try with their puns, neither am I. Why did we almost get hit by a shooting star? Uh, well, I guess we're at a higher altitude than we really need to be. Yeah, that's great. Except the fact that you could see the ground! Well, you know what? Enough of that. We head back to the professor who deems it time to go out and see what kind of depression he's laid on the world. But what does it mean? What's the matter with you? Are you high, man? You just looked at him struggle for a full minute, and you still... You know what? I'm gonna be honest with you folks. This entire scene goes on forever, but I swear, it goes nowhere. And every scene has been like this. They should have just called this the Christmas that wasted time. You can literally just take a 75 minute chunk out of it and you'll have a half hour special without losing any supposed plot. But no, we have to stretch out gags, destroy timing. What else could possibly go wrong? Oh, kids, it's another sad panda Christmas fact. <laughs> Did you know that France is not visited by Santa Claus? Then again, who would want to visit France? We have our own version of Santa Claus called Père Fouettard. And trust me, nobody wants that mother la la. to fly over your land because he's farting goat cheese. Yuck. There's something amiss here, and it's not just the movie. Uh, let's at least try to get at some semblance of a plot. Well, there it goes! 
two whole hours of work building that machine down the drain. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how the CG modelers felt. Felix and Poindexter begin their trek to find Santa, only to be stopped by a group of mysterious snowballs that pop up from the ground. Uh, these high-pitched idiots are so frightened of these snowballs that they are chased up a tree. But what does it mean? Looks like we're up a tree without a paddle. That's the joke. You suck, Big Bang! <laughs> Again, back to Santa for some reason. I'd swear I'd get whiplash if this weren't so slow. And we've never canceled Christmas yet. Although there's a first time for everything. I heard that, Santa. Christmas is ruined. We sure could use some help. Boy, we sure could use some help. Boy, we sure could use some help. Did somebody say help? Huh? Luca? Oh, man. Am I glad to see you? You have no idea what I'm going through right now. Of course, that's why I came just in time to give you this magic sandwich. Magic sandwich? Well, okay, I'll take what I can get. I mean, we'll destroy this horrible excuse for a Christmas special? Nope, but it might be able to turn you into a mermaid just like you always wanted. Get out! Doo-dee-doo! Apparently, these snowballs were some sort of sentient snow children, whom I swear were all mascots for a line of popsicles at a liquor store. My name is Chili, and this is Icy, and that's Sleet, and Snowflake. Oh, <laughs> that's Zaza. You're Zaza Gabor. Oh, that's one of my names. Let's not give them a cool reception. Poindexter, again, leave the comedy to me. I know there isn't a payoff to this running gag. It's coming from the mouth of the guy who tried to make cut it out a regular thing. Throwing snowballs is good manners. You see, that's a snow kid's custom for welcoming people to our village. It's a sign of respect. And if one of us tries to shoot you in the face, that means we love you. I don't see a village anywhere. Well, that's because you're not looking carefully enough. Yes, you're not looking hard enough at the nothing there. Anyway, these are the Snow Kids. To what purpose do they serve? Just to look darn adorable. But if you ask me, they just look like a crew of disfigured Caspers. So what do they do? Stop the plot completely so we can take a look at an opening sequence to a canceled show. Not coming soon to ABC, NBC, CBS, or Fox, because Saturday mornings are dead. After a long, long bit of audio torture, the unluckiest black cat in animation suddenly remembers why in the hell they're in the North Pole in the first place. We came to help save Santa so that he can deliver presents to kids all over the world. All over the world! The only way to get to the North Pole from here is through the ice forest. Why is that a problem, Chili? Because it's haunted! Dun, dun, dun. Well, let's go! Well, that didn't take much negotiation, did it? Anyway, they head into the ice forest until they meet up with the dreaded <laughs> sweet Snagglepuss. Oh, that design is worse than anything on Adventure Time, and that show prides itself to look like it was designed by a five-year-old. Let's slide! Now that that's settled, they finally, FINALLY arrive at Santa's. He gives them a tour of the place before, you know, they save him or something. We've got all the latest games. Our elves test every game personally. Oh really, Santa? Then why the hell is Skyrim so buggy? Take a look at the information coming back from our satellite circling the Earth. We launched the SWS in 1957. Ah, so it wasn't the commies. Still, Santa's looking pretty red to me. 
Before you can ask, why am I watching this? Poindexter eventually types on a computer to find out where the source of the weather conditions are happening. Of course, your computer is much slower than the one I have at home. Yeah, that brings up another interesting question. Why didn't you just do this at home? It appears my uncle is up to no good again. No, it was the bad guy who did it? Who would have guessed? Oh my god, this blizzard is so intense. Whatever shall we do? Oh, hair dryer. Yay! Oh, and now it's time for another Sad Panda Christmas fact. Oh. It is well known that yellow snow tastes like lemonade when pink snow actually tastes like. Sad Panda, these facts have absolutely nothing to do with the spirit of Christmas. In fact, I don't even think anything you've said so far is remotely true. Oh well, that's okay. Okay? How does. How does that even make it okay? It makes it okay because it's actually St. Patrick's Day here in France today. So happy St. Patrick's Day to you! Happy St. Patrick's Day to you too. So you want to know the big payoff? You really want to know how Felix saved Christmas? Poindexter puts on a bunch of glasses on the reindeer to help them see through the snow, leaving question as to whatever happened to Rudolph. That's it! Christmas saved! Woohoo! Thank God you were here! You all are a bunch of nerds! So they fly off to the professor's place in this intense blizzard. Mm. Felix, Poindexter, but but who gave you my secret password? How did you get in? What's this world coming to? What a mad science! Why is it taking so long for them to talk about things? We don't need this kind of narration. It'd be easier just to say one sentence, then stand there for five minutes until the next line. I do not understand. Understand? But what does it mean? The professor explains yet again why he's doing this, but this time it comes with a flashback. I was never included in any Christmas festivities. Did they ever ask me to go to Christmas caroling? No. Did you ever stop and think to maybe, no, I don't know, go outside yourself and ask them? I could just cavell. As the professor continues to whine about himself, Felix finally puts a stop to the snow machine by sticking a cork in it. Felix has ruined everything again! Drat! Double drat! And triple drat! Well done, Felix. Great job, Felix! I hope I see you guys again real soon. Zaza, you can talk! Hey, don't you ever, ever speak again! What? <laughs> she sure can. She's been talking non-stop all the way from the North Pole. Um, I guess that was part of the plot. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! <laughs> I'm assuming whatever happened there was a punchline. So, Christmas is saved. The Snow Children of the Damned are never heard from again, and Santa can continue doing the work that he could have done even if it was snowing for weeks. And Dr. Wily and Dogface Stupid are taken in by Cossacks? Whoa! They're being taken to a Russian prison? Wow, that is some massive punishment for making it lightly snow all day. Don't! Numbskulls! Miscreant! Doofus! Neanderthal! Snow brain, dingle brain, airhead, nincom poop, lame brain, ice for brains. Huh? A present for me? Yeah, kids. It doesn't matter how evil you are. You'll still get presents. Maybe I am a good boy after all. It's a shame I'm still on death row. Right. Oh. With all that, what can I say? This seems so wasteful. Long pausing dialogue, unnecessarily long scenes with terrible timing. Time, yes, waste of time. For a Christmas special, it's anything but. It felt so heartless. No conclusion or thought of actual holiday spirit. Well, except for the fact that Santa's in it. Is that really what they felt all it takes to make a Christmas cartoon? For shame.
I'm giving this movie a big old steaming pile of coal. <sighs> but you know, despite the fact that I saw a really, really, really bad Christmas special, I don't feel sad or depressed or even suicidal. No, no. Christmas is something more because I got the opportunity to share it with all of you. It doesn't matter how terrible a cartoon is, it's the thought behind it that's terrible. And if I can just share that terrible, terrible thing with all of you, then it's really all not that terrible to me. And that is the greatest gift of all. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. That's why I came just in time to give you this magic sandwich. Artist. Dude. Man. Dennis? Nancy? Real Andrew, what the f Guy with the pencils? Cuddly bear. Critic, you know who this is. You may have taken the Felix the Cat movie from me, but I just went up to you with the Christmas special. What do you think of that, huh? It's so dumb and monotonous and boring that not even you can take it from me! <laughs> Stupid teleporters. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah. And then, just to top off how annoying this Bobcat is, he keeps repeating what could possibly go wrong. Guys. Stop your patience.